Whenever I think the prayer for the holy souls in purgatory, I'm quite saddened, actually, at this fact, that we live in such a materialistic world that we forget, we forget the spiritual. And so often, even the best of us Catholics forget to say a prayer for those souls most in need, the souls in purgatory. It's even for the best of us. But then what is even more saddening, or perhaps we should say maddening, is the fact that the Novus Ordo religion, which poses as Catholic, but is nothing more than another heretical religion straight from the pits of hell, well, they do, no, do not any longer believe in purgatory. Oh, you might find a few of the faithful who still believe it, but the religion as a whole does not. It's a diabolical religion, really. And the devil, well, why would he want us to pray for the poor souls? Because those souls, once released from purgatory, will fill up the thrones that were intended for the angels, for the bad angels before they ran away from God. And they don't want to see the, the the human souls filling up those spots. So what did they do? They made it so that the Novus Ordo would deny purgatory. Now all of their funerals, instead of black, a sign of death, white, a sign of life, a sign that there is no need for mourning or penance. They're already in heaven. No need to pray for them. Abandon them in purgatory. That's the result. And it is truly a diabolic thing. How sad it is. But you and I, well, we're members of St. Hugh of Lincoln Parish. It's a tiny one, but nonetheless we have a very great saint. He was known not only for his devotion to the Blessed Sacrament and, of course, his willingness in confirming those little children on the streets that he would meet. And he'd ask them oftentimes, to see a little child about a certain age, he'd get down off his horse and he'd say, little one, have you been confirmed yet? And if the child ever answered no, well, he'd confirm him right there on the spot. He was very zealous for his flock. But one other thing about him that perhaps you don't know is that he was most devoted to attending the funerals of the poor people of his diocese, who would have otherwise hardly anybody there to attend the funeral. He would attend them, as busy as he was as a bishop, for he, he realized the importance of prayer for the souls in purgatory. Well, it's true even for us. We must imitate St. Hugh of Lincoln. Let's make it a point to do that. All of this month of November, the month dedicated to the Holy Souls, to imitate our patron, to pray and to sacrifice even more than the rest of the year for the poor souls in purgatory. Remember that not only is it just an act of devotion or piety, it is actually a, an act of charity, a spiritual work of mercy. And one day, when your soul departs your body, you will be judged on whether or not you prayed and sacrificed for the poor souls. Because, because it is a duty for those of you that have parents in, who, have, who have died. Well, if they're in purgatory, you owe them prayers out of piety then perhaps you have been the cause of, of another man sinning. And that man might be in purgatory because of you. Well then, you owe it to pray for him. And so on and so forth. There are so many reasons why we should pray. And it's so simple. Remember, you don't need anything grand, but maybe you can put off taking a drink of water or eating your favorite snack even for just 30 seconds. 
and offering that for the poor souls. And it might be just enough of a sacrifice to set one soul flying into heaven, where then he will see God face to face. You never know. It could be just something tiny that you have to do at this moment that might set a soul free. And St. Alphonsus then tells us, whatever you do for the poor souls will come back upon you a hundredfold. And I like to mention this anyway during all of the poor souls sermons. When that soul flies into heaven, that soul who you set free by your prayer or sacrifice, he then goes before the throne of God and is one of your greatest benefactors. In the virtue of gratitude, which he has to a high degree, that soul will always remember the little prayer that you said here tonight that set them free. And they will be praying for you perhaps your whole life long. It's a beautiful thing, this doctrine of the communion of saints. But I end the sermon again reminding you we're the faithful sons and daughters of St. Hugh of Lincoln. Let us imitate him, particularly in this month of the holy souls, in praying for these dear souls, friends of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.